I don't like battle royales. If you ask me, battle royales are like the golden corral of the game industry. Everyone has one, but nobody wants to be caught dead eating from the chocolate fountain or standing behind John Goodman asking for his fifth steak. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? But all that aside, I actually enjoy Spellbreak for reasons I can't quite pin down. I mean, it's a battle royale, so it has the same issues other battle royales do. There's an insane amount of tryhards, so the best strategy is just to hide and catch someone polishing their ass over someone's fresh corpse. And there's a surprising amount of downtime. Even if you decide to drop on top of other players, you'll fight for maybe 10 to 15 seconds before being subjected to 5 to 10 minutes of roaming the map looking for fuck all to do. Hi, my name is Delta. I hope you liked the video today. If you like it, please leave a like. And if you really liked it, please think about subscribing and supporting the channel. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to it. Spellbreak lobbies are filled with 42 players instead of the usual 100, which I guess makes sense because of the fact you play as a maid instead of Jake Paul with an AR, but I think this is what causes the issue of the game feeling a bit boring when you aren't fighting anyone. The barren map aside, let's talk about gameplay. Are you ready? Spellbreak is actually pretty fun. Before you queue up for a match, you have to select your class, which basically dictates how you're going to play the game. There's the fast and floaty Tempest class, which is my personal favorite. The long range marksman frostborn class, the fucking toxicologist class, the somehow strong as well lackluster stone shaper class, and the average all around pyromancer. With these different classes to choose from, you get some pretty different playstyles, even though some are just outright better than others. <laughs> After you pick your class, you drop in and well, it's a battle royale. You roam the massive map looking for gear and other spell gauntlets that synergize well with the one you equipped before the match. And some common combos are fire and wind, wind and lightning, wind and toxic, fire and toxic, and even ice and toxic. These spell combos make the gameplay feel fresh, since even though toxic is the strongest spell on its own, all of the combinations you can make from the other spells can rival its power. The big issue I tend to have with battle royale is that I can never find the good gun. You know the one. The one that rules the meta in almost every single game like this. Meaning that if you find someone who has it and you don't, well, off to the goulash or whatever the fuck. Spellbreak still has scaling spells and yeah it's annoying when you have the shitty white lightning and someone has epic stone and they just two shot you but the loot isn't randomized. If you always drop at ruby grove or somewhere nearby you could just loot the epic chest there and have a good advantage in the early game. Speaking of the early game, in my first 10 matches of Spellbreak I've won 3 of them. This is huge. I am not the best at video games, especially shooters, but in comparing this game to the other battle royales that I've played, a 30% win rate out of 10 games is amazing compared to the hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of games of Fortnite I've played with only one win. Why do you think that is? I'll give you three guesses. You guessed it. Bots. In my first 20 games of Spellbreak, I noticed an absurd amount of bots, which doesn't make much sense to me. It's obvious that the developers deployed bots to make the experience easier for newcomers to the game and genre, but it's also not hard to see that Spellbreak is having a hard time filling its map with players. Instead of just shoving more and more bots and ruining the competitive integrity of your game, why don't you just cut the map and player size in half? That way, you can balance around constant fighting instead of balancing around random loot. If they don't want to do that, then they could also maybe put some neutral monsters on the map. Maybe defeating these neutral monsters can provide the player some sort of buff, like attack speed, cooldown reduction. Then the players would have to make decisions. Do I fight the big monster, giving away my position or losing a lot of health in the process? Or do I stick around nearby and wait to catch someone else doing it and get the drop on them? This creates a depth in the gameplay. But Delta, battle royales aren't meant to have death. And why the fuck not? Shake up the formula, do something crazy, I don't know, just anything for the player to do during the long periods of downtime. But Delta, what about the relics? What about them? The one that revives you is obviously the best one, so why would I ever bother with the other 15? But Delta, this game is horribly balanced, okay, there I said it. I was trying to hold it in, but the bullshit relic system got me. Why have a spell that can only hit players that are on the ground? Spellbreak has so much mobility. The stone spell is only good if you're playing with someone who isn't jumping, or if you're dual with someone playing toxic who can keep the enemy trapped in poison puddles. But any smart player will be constantly jumping to make themselves harder to hit and to completely counteract your spell. I just don't understand what happened when they were designing this game. Don't get me wrong, I still like Spellbreak and it is now part of my rotation, but I can definitely see it dying a slow and painful death, especially when the new COD releases next month. Spellbreak, even with all your issues, you're alright. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Again, my name is Delta. I appreciate you making it this far. Uh, if you liked it, please leave a like. And if you really, really liked it, please, for the love of God, subscribe. Because it helps me out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it really helps out the channel. Um, I guess I should also plug that I am a Twitch streamer. I stream on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We kind of have a real gay old time in there. So if you have time on those days, maybe swing by. Who knows? Maybe you can uh, join the old party. 
But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.